Watson has seen an insane spike in her pick rate in the last week, jumping from one of the least pick legends to doubling her pick rate from 2.3% to 5.6, making Watson the sixth most played legend in Apex Legends. Welcome to another Guide Wednesday where I use my over 6,000 hours played to teach you how to play Apex Legends. But why are people so interested in Watson all of a sudden? Did she receive any changes in Season 12? I have one idea. Respawn also gave out Watson so everyone could play her for free with the anniversary event, leading to a lot more players trying her out, and could be a reason why you're currently watching this guide. Watson has seen many iterations throughout the game and was at one point the meta-defining legend in a more passive season. Now she's taken a bit of a backseat in ranked and competitive alike, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't benefit in a bunker playstyle in lower ranks and public matches. In fact, a Watson that's coupled with other defensive legends such as a Caustic makes for a team that is barely worth pushing, as you can stall out a fight indefinitely. As such, she's very oppressive with the right team and sees a very high win rate even in casual matches. Despite her passive playstyle, Watson has a few tricks up her sleeve allowing her to push forward and be aggressive in the right moments. Stay tuned to learn how to play Watson in Apex Legends Season 12. Let's dive right into her kit. Starting with Watson's passive, Spark of Genius has two uses. 1. Using an ultimate accelerant will instantly replenish your ultimate, as opposed to the 35% it restores normally. Watson can also stack two ultimate accelerants in the same slot. 2. Watson passively restores shield health, sort of like Octane's passive. Watson recharges one shield per two seconds after avoiding damage for six. This passive also stacks with the recharge of her ultimate, the Interception Pylon. The slow recharge is highly useful if you want to save up in shield heals such as batteries or shield cells, but keep in mind it takes up to 250 seconds, or about 4 minutes, to fully recover a shield. Running around with no shield leaves you very vulnerable, but you can consider leaving about a cell's worth to regenerate when you're rotating. Thanks to her passive, it's ideal to carry at least two ultimate accelerants on you at all times. If not for yourself, it can be beneficial for your teammates. Her tactical, the Perimeter Security, allows Watson to create electrified fences by placing nodes. If an enemy steps into the electric fence, they take 20 damage per take and get slowed and stunned for about 3 seconds. Watson's team also gets alerted of the fence's activation, giving the Watson hit markers, prompting a voice line, and pinging the fence's location on the map. This makes them a mighty deterrent for enemies to run in head first, and if they want to enter your base unharmed, they have to slow down and break the nodes connecting the fences that have 25 health, exposing themselves in the process. The nodes can be destroyed by gunfire, a melee hit, caustic gas or throwables, and other abilities such as a crypto EMP or diffuse knuckle cluster. They will not break from ring damage. A Watson can hold up to 4 nodes on her person which recharge every 15 seconds. Watson can keep 12 of these nodes active on the map at all times and if you place an additional node when you are capped out, you will destroy the oldest node. To manage your node balance, Watson can pick up her place nodes off of the floor, resetting their age and returning the node charge. Watson can also use nodes placed by other Watsons from other teams. The electric fence will belong to the Watson who placed the last node. When building an electric fence, nodes must keep a line of sight with each other within 20 meters. They can be connected with up to two other nodes at the same time. You don't need to walk up to a place node to start a fence, all you need to do is look at an existing node and activate your tactical within range to tell the game which one you want to connect to, allowing yourself to set up without exposing yourself too much. To get the most out of Watson's fences, you want to try and place your nodes to make it as difficult as possible to reach the nodes from the outside. There are several clever placements to ensure that the enemy team will struggle to break their way in without at the very least exposing themselves. That being said, make sure that you or a teammate place near that fence, as an affected enemy is a completely free kill but only if someone is there to punish them. Watson's fences can be used in countless ways and there's an insane amount of tips on how you can set up her base. Here are three quick basic tips to get you started. Extend the fences as far away as possible from the doorway. Make sure your fences are connected in a crisscross pattern to cover as much space as possible. You can place the fences over gaps making ascending very difficult and taking a vertical zipline without taking damage impossible. If you guys want to see a full setup examples video guide, let me know in the comments. The electric fence between the nodes is extremely powerful and if a door gets in the way of the fences, that door will shatter. As such, be careful about placing the nodes near doorways. If someone opens the door into the fence, it breaks almost instantly. The fences also trigger Caustic's Nox Trap, ignores knockdown shield damage and continues to damage those affected by the fence. And if a trident happens to pass through it, it will get disabled for 5 seconds. Always look out for ways to use these fences. Consider placing them in triangle shape in places where enemies might be forced to go through and even while rotating. This might either damage the enemies or alert you if someone happens to destroy your fences, revealing the position of that team. Because of how easy they are to place and with such a short cooldown, try to quickly drop fences to block the enemy team's path even in the middle of a team fight. There's nothing stopping you from quickly locking down a doorway mid-fight, and when well placed it can completely swing the fight. For example, you can use the fence to lock teams inside of their buildings and their camping spots, forcing them to rush through the fence or die to the storm or grenades in late game. The fences don't need to be placed straight on the ground, they just need a line of sight and they're very liberal with it. Thanks to this, you can 
can place them over gaps such as stairways or vertical zip lines. In some cases, you can place the fences to almost fully conceal the node. If Watson or her teammates try walking through these fences, they will deactivate as long as Watson's team passes through them. This allows for some really creative play. Let me explain. As the name implies, the fences aren't actually traps, but instead a deterrent. But that doesn't stop you from using them as such. You can trap a team within a room by placing a fence by a doorway, standing on top of said node and waiting for the enemy to run in. If you step off the node just in time, this will activate the fence to stun and damage the unsuspecting enemy, cutting them off from their teammates and giving you an easy kill. You can also use indestructible doors such as these or these to set up fly traps. Place and connect nodes on both sides of the doors and then just close them. This breaks the line of sight and temporarily disables the fences. An unsuspecting enemy might walk up to open the doors only to reactivate the fences and instantly get themselves trapped. The Gibraltar Dome will temporarily break the line of sight and deactivate Watson's fences, so expect Gibraltar teams to use these to make a clean entry into your base. Consider using your fences in combination with abilities. A good Watson instantly fences off a Wraiths or Ashes portal as this stuns the enemy who happens to take it. This is extra useful if you're going for a kidnap. It's also hard to counter a fence at the end of a zipline or if you are stuck in a Horizon Ultimate. If you see a Revenant Ultimate, you can be extra cheeky and place the fences around the Ultimate where the enemy team will get sent back to, stunning the Revenant's team when they come back from Shadow Form. Her Tactical and Passive both go hand in hand with her Ultimate, the Interception Pylon. Using this Ultimate places an Electrified Pylon that destroys incoming Ordnance and repairs damaged shields. Standing near the pylon boosts Watson's tactical recharge rate from 15 seconds to just 3 per node. As with the rest of Watson's kit, the pylon serves many uses. The pylon destroys any ordnance that enters its radius. If a throwable such as a grenade or most abilities comes from the outside and passes the pylon radius and visible when looking at a placed pylon, it will get destroyed. If an ordnance thrown from inside of that circle lands within the radius, it will also get destroyed. The pylon will destroy the following. Grenades, such as a frag grenade, arc stars or thermite grenades. Tacticals, such as Bangalore smoke launcher, caustic's nox traps. Revenant Silence, Horizon's Gravity Lift, Fuse's Knuckle Cluster, Valkyrie's Missile Swarm, Maggie's Riot Drill. It will also destroy ultimates such as Bangalore's Rolling Thunder, Gibraltar's Defensive Barbarment, Caustic's Nox Gas Grenade, Horizon's Black Hole, Fuse's Mother Load, and Maggie's Wrecking Ball. To reiterate, the pylon will not destroy Lifeline Dock Heal Drones, Lifeline Care Packages, Gibraltar Domes of Protection, Octane's Jump Pad, Loba's Black Market, or Valkyrie. The pylon will only defend you from ordinances it has a clear line of sight to, and that haven't landed yet. The pylon also passively recharges shields of anyone within its range. It recharges 5 shields per second and has a shield pool of 250 shields. A full 125 HP shield recharge would take about 25 seconds, but don't forget to pop shield cells at the same time to heal up even faster. You can see how much shield charge is left on a pylon by looking at the ring that surrounds it. Once again, it recharges the shields of anyone that's in range. This also includes on your enemies. The healing effect does not stack with other pylons, but it does stack with Watson's passive passively healing your shields for up to a total of 6 shields per second. Again, using an ultimate accelerant instantly replenishes the pylon cooldown, which normally has a recharge rate of 3 minutes. A pylon lasts forever unless destroyed, and you can only have one active at a time. It's fairly easy to destroy as it only has 150 health. If you deploy another pylon when you currently have one active, the oldest one gets destroyed. Be careful when placing the pylon and find a place where it covers as much ground as possible, but at the same time isn't exposed to the enemy team's line of sight. Corners are usually perfect for this. The ultimate doesn't need to cover every single angle, just enough that it can destroy throwables if they do fly in through cracks or windows. Keep in mind that a riot drill can still break the ultimate through walls. The pylon is actually a great way to quickly set up and find a safe refuge, especially in later zones. Because of this, try to make sure that you always have a pylon available. Again, try to keep at least one ultimate accelerant on you. You can even quickly set up the pylon for quick makeshift 150 HP cover from gunfire, in addition to the possible 250 shield regen. The pylon will not take damage from the ring, but it will take damage from caustic gas and Actually, a quick note, when we were recording footage for this guide, we found that the caustic gas no longer breaks the Watson ultimate. Who figured? And grenades that may get close enough before it activates upon placement. The pylon instantly gets destroyed by Crypto's EMP, regardless of its current health. You can stand on top of the ultimate, meaning that you can use it as a surprise angle or to reach places that otherwise would be too hard to climb to. Watson is a support legend, meaning that in team fights she'll naturally play in the back of her team. Watson wants to anchor and provide a safe harbor that her team can fall back to, either with cover, fences, or even her interception pylon. This doesn't mean that she can't push forward, and sometimes it might be beneficial to push forward and secure an area instead of waiting for your teammates. But as with every anchor legend, Watson should be the last legend in the team to die.
Watson can run any weapon loadout and it very much depends on her team's composition and playstyle, though I'd probably run low ammunition weapons with decent poke ability such as the 30-30 or wingman coupled with shotguns to allow her to carry ultimate accelerants or grenades to assist her team. In a sweatier lobby, you can consider running a sniper and poking the enemy teams once you are set up, relying on your passive shield regen to heal up chip damage. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you want to see me playing Watson aggressively to get a 20 bomb on her, that video is available on the screen right now. Thank you again and I'll see you all tomorrow.